Hi, this is ex-Gilead missionary. I remember the day that I got the letter inviting me to go to Gilead. I was very happy. I remember reading through the instructions and one of the things that was very important that we had to do before we went to Gilead was to read the entire Bible from beginning to end. Now we only got the letter about three months before we went to Gilead, so that meant we had to read about 17 chapters every single day without fail. What was interesting is that I had never read the Bible like that before. As a Jehovah's Witness, I had always read the Bible maybe three chapters a week in connection with the assignment for the Theocratic Ministry School. Every week we had to read some chapters and then we'd look up information in the Society's publications that would help us understand what those chapters meant. But as I read the Bible before I went to Gilead, I noticed that since I wasn't reading along with the Society's publications, I got a different feel for the Bible. The Bible took on a different flavor for me, and I really enjoyed reading it. Of course, there were some things that I tended to gloss over, like in Judges chapter 19 through 21, when the concubine got chopped up into pieces. Well, that wasn't such fun reading. But I really enjoyed reading the whole Bible from beginning to end without looking at a single Watchtower publication. So as April rolled around, it was time to go to Gilead. As I read the book of Revelation, what struck me was Revelation 1 and verse 10. Now John said, he says, according to New World Translation, by inspiration, I came to be in the Lord's day. Now the society indicates that this verse is actually a key to understanding the rest of the book of Revelation. Yes, because this verse explains what time frame the book of Revelation takes place. The Revelation book indicates that the Lord's Day refers to the time period that begins in 1914 and continues to the end of the system of things. But it's interesting to note that the New World Translation also has a footnote for this verse, which says, I came to be under inspiration on the Lord's Day. Now, if you look at that footnote, it says on the Lord's Day, which gives a different meaning to the verse. It means that John had a vision on a specific day. He was not saying that he had a vision of 1914 onward, but rather he had a vision on a particular day. Well, that struck me as odd. So, the society does encourage us to compare different Bible translations to make sure we get the correct understanding of a verse. And I've noticed that just about all Bible translations render it as the footnote indicated that John had a vision on the Lord's Day. But the point that was being made in all these Bible translations was that John had a vision on a particular day. He wasn't having a vision of a period of time in the future related to a particular religious organization. He merely had a vision on a particular day of the week. Here I was, I believed that the Watchtower Society was teaching us the truth, and yet in their explanation of this verse in the Revelation book, the Society made no mention of this footnote. And yet this footnote was very important because it changed the entire meaning of the verse, and therefore the entire meaning of the Society's interpretation of Revelation. That was a powerful thought. As I read through the rest of the book of Revelation, I wondered, well, what does this mean if we read it that John had a vision on Sunday? Frequently, the society will use footnotes on Bible verses to expand the meaning of a particular Bible verse. Note how the society expands on the meaning of Matthew 11:28. Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you. Yet in the footnote, it says, Get under my yoke with me. So when the society wishes to expand on the meaning of scripture, it does use footnotes to make the point. Yet in the Revelation book, there is no mention of this footnote at all. I could not believe that I was in Gilead and wondering for the first time in my life whether I really was in the truth or not. It was a scary thought. As I began my classes, I felt it was a wonderful privilege to be there. Yet I had this nagging doubt in the back of my mind, wondering for the first time in my life whether this was the truth. And in my classes that first week, we discussed something that again caused my faith to waver. We'll talk about that in the next video.